I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps. Why, thank you, Paul Page. Welcome. Welcome back to IndyCar Racing 2. Paul Page on the introduction. What? What is? What's all about that? Welcome back for round number three. I got. I didn't get. Paul Page himself has has blessed us all here. No, this is not an AI, or at least I really don't think it is. But uh, Josh, who. I don't know, I don't know their last name, but Josh, who's on Discord and, and sometimes shows up here, Josh the Bassist, reached out to Paul Page and asked him to record this. Hold on, we'll play it again, because I'm, I'm going to play it a few times. This will now become a feature on the channel. Hold on, i got to figure out where it is. Here it is. I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Labs. This is GP Labs, he's so good at it. It's so funny to hear Paul Page saying YouTube for some reason. I'm sure he's said it before. But I, I cannot thank Josh enough. He reached out to Paul Page and, and basically asked him if he'd record this, and Paul responded and said sure. <laughs> and did it. It's amazing. One of the best surprises I've ever gotten. One of the best surprises I've ever gotten. So that is quite the way to start today. Back for round number three of the 1980, 1980, 1990 NASCAR, NASCAR, IndyCar. I'm all over the place. I'm just so excited by Paul Page. But back for round number three of the 1990 cart season. And that, of course, brings us to the big one. Indianapolis, the Indianapolis 500. It feels like it comes so quick in the season. Uh, it feels like you have very little preparation, but I guess we would have been practicing for a full month and all that stuff leading up to this. But it's been a heck of a season so far. Through two rounds, through two rounds, Phoenix and Long Beach, both races I thought went pretty well. This is this season running on full hardcore damage and everything, so any little hit to the wall or touch anything, the car will break. And I have so far finished two races. Long Beach last time was very much, uh, a, it was a demo derby for part of it there. Not the best race overall, but I did end up finishing. Phoenix, we'll look back, I finished second. Could have almost got Michael in the final laps, but we had a yellow flag with like two laps to go that stopped that final pass. Could have all ended in tears as well, so maybe it's good that it happened. But got the second place there, which I wasn't even sure I was going to finish that race, so I'm happy with that. And then at Long Beach last time, Danny Sullivan gets the win from Michael Andretti. Very happy for that, so Michael hasn't won two in a row, but he does have two top two finishes so far. And uh, I finished back in fifth, a couple laps down because of, who was that, Roberto Guerrero, I think, just dive-bombed me coming into T1, and somehow my car didn't have terminal damage, but I had some damage that I had to fix. We fixed the car, got back out there, did what I could, finished fifth, top five. I mean, you really can't complain about that. But that brings us all to Indianapolis for the 500. It's a full 500 mile race we're doing today. Um, and so it's, it's gonna be a doozy. And making it to the end is always the goal with these. We'll have to see how it goes. If we click in, here's the season points thus far. So already through two rounds and Michael Andretti with those two top twos has a really good lead so as much as I want to win today and back up my my 1989 result of winning um, I, I really hope Michael Andretti doesn't win today and he has a bad day overall that would be good but it is Indianapolis and uh, the Andretti's you know they don't have the best luck there Thank you, Celian. I know um, I know a lot of folks uh, are watching other stuff with the IndyCar practice and all that, but uh, just trying to find a spot to squeak this in today. Wanted to get on with this season. I did it once, and I can do it again, maybe. Last year, I did win the Indy 500 for, for this series, and it was a very... I thought it was very surprising, because coming into the final stint, I was chasing down Scott Pruitt, if you all remember back, and 
it wasn't clear that he was going to have to pit or not, and he ended up having to pit and somehow got the win. Um, so far in my testing here, things have been kind of all over the place. Uh, I've tried to work on the setup a little bit, especially for qualifying to be a bit uh, a bit faster. And um, I think it, it's going to depend on, it's a bit of randomness. Uh, and that, that's what keeps it fun with doing the IndyCar series and why this sim is so much fun. Uh, but it's a bit it's a bit random depending on who's going to be fast or not. I've had some races where it hasn't been super bad to keep up, and then other ones where a couple cars are like so much faster than everybody else. So um, it keeps it fresh. But hopefully we get a uh, hopefully we get one today that I can actually win and uh, you know see what I can do. But I'm gonna do a couple laps of practice here just to make sure everything sounds and feels good before we really get into qualifying. Yeah, we'll do qualifying and then the race, of course, after this, but I'll just do a couple laps on my quali setup. <laughs> uh, I'm just buzzing, though. I can't believe somebody got Paul Page to do an introduction. Hold on. We'll play it as I'm rolling out of the pits here. One more time for those that missed it. I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps. Yes, it is, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Paul Page. He probably doesn't know what GP Laps is, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it. Alright, come out on the track. So, Indianapolis, of course, the big oval. We've got the warm up lanes. Ooh, running out a little wide. We've got the warm-up lanes, and uh, it is very helpful to have those, I'd say, especially for dealing with lap traffic. We'll, we'll be encountering a lot of lap traffic today during this. I know Josh said he was going to send Paul Page the stream, and I don't know if he'll, he'll get... He probably... I would be interested to ask him if he remembers that he did those introductions for these games. I mean, the introduction, it's a sentence at the start of it, but every single time I booted up this sim for t the last 25 years, that's, that's what I hear. And so it's just kind of ingrained in my mind. He was such an influential commentator to me over the years. And, uh, you know, listening to him, and I, I watch back these races quite often from this time period and stuff, so I just get him and Bobby Unser and Sam Posey and them. So, it's just so cool to have him, uh, have him say that. <laughs> and have it, now we have that forever, I can play that, probably use it way too much. You'll get sick of it before long, but I won't. Alright. Car feels good. So, I'm in the qualifying setup right now, so I should be much faster than everybody else. But I do also want to practice a pit entry. Oh, Josh, you're here. Everybody, give big thanks to Josh for that introduction. As I almost run into the back of Al Unser as one of the Glidden, Glidden Menards cars comes out of the pit. I'm on now, Aiden. Yeah, I guess Paul Page did a little bit of motorsports stuff during the the whole shebang that happened, so. Who knows? He might know more than I'm giving him credit for, but uh, it is so cool to have him <laughs> do the introduction. I certainly would have not, not have reached out and bothered him with it, and I'm happy that he responded so pleasantly to it, and, uh, and Josh definitely gets the, uh, definitely gets the award for reaching out and do I've seen people in the past maybe it was Josh you in the past uh, talking about I've seen people ask like you should get Paul Page to record an intro or something and I've always thought of that as a joke that that would never happen and uh, it did all right I'm all over the track because I'm not paying attention we'll do a couple more laps I'm just gonna practice a pit stop because we have to do a lot of those today yeah, I would say it's tough to say who's who's on the level of Murray Walker because Murray Walker is such a 
But I think Paul Page, for American commentators, Paul Page is certainly up there, you know, alongside the Ken Squires and, you know, the Benny Parsons and the, all the people, Bob Jenkins, the folks that we really like over here for NASCAR and IndyCar and stuff. Uh, he's certainly one of them. For me, he is the guy, but I, I'm a, kind of an IndyCar guy, so... But yeah, he's he is one of the guys. He's definitely for me on the same level as like a Murray Walker. Did he just was that voice for all of these years? Yeah, Konamaki, Varsha as well. Yep, all good. A lot of a lot of respect for those guys. All right, I'm gonna try pitting in this time. We got to do like what nine pit stops today in this race. But that's a good way to put it. If you don't know who Paul Page is, and you do know who Murray Walker is, for me at least, and maybe some others, it's that kind of guy for us. So it was just very cool. Slam on the brakes, took quite a shallow line. It's so hard to get down to speed right here for the first pit stall. But as long as I don't overshoot it, we'll be good. All right. So we do have a full grid here today uh, for the race. 33 cars. They're not... 100% the same guys that raced in the actual 500, but it's pretty close. There might be a couple differences overall, but it's uh, more or less the full grid. We've got a few folks we haven't seen this season, of course, up until this point. And um, yeah, we'll have to see. So let's look at the qualifying. We'll pretend I'm the last car to go. I guess that is kind of true. Last car to go, and we'll look from the back. At the, at the current standing, so with a 218. Now, I think I can get, if I do really well in the 227s, I think, so we'll see. We'll see, but Mike Croft, Jim Crawford, and Willie T. Ribs in the back. Willie T., he's one of the ones, he didn't race in this race in 1990, but did a lot of the other races on the season. But we've got him on the grid, Jeff Wood, Hero, Matsushita, Tony Bettenhausen Jr., Al Unser making his first appearance of our season. All the way back, getting into the 220s now. Dominic Dobson, Gary Bettenhausen, Didier Thays, Kevin Kogan, Randy Lewis, come on up. Buddy Lazier, we haven't seen, I don't think, up to this point. The 96 winner. Scott Brayton, Dean Hall, AJ Foyt's back in 17th. Jan Bikas, Pancho Carter, we come towards the front of the grid. So Roberto Guerrero, Emerson Fittipaldi, and Scott Goodyear. Rick Mears with a 226. I, th I should be able to get into the top 10 if I don't mess something up. Teo Fabi, Raul Boisel filling in for Scott Pruitt for the season. Of course, Eddie Cheever in his rookie year up in eighth. Al Unser Jr. Whoa. So this is where I don't know if I'll be able to get this fast. We'll have to see. Al Unser Jr. up in seventh. Mario Andretti, Bobby Ray Hall. Oh, oh God. I don't see Michael yet. Ari Leindyke, the real winner, is in fourth. Michael Andretti's in third. Okay, he's not fastest at least. John Andretti is in second, and Danny Sullivan, winner last time out, is on the pole currently. But I, we have one more run to go, and it is our driver here. So it's an average of four laps, just like real life that we have to do. And uh, I've practiced this a bit. Last year, I totally flubbed the qualifying for this in our last season, and uh, hoping to not do that this year. But we'll see. We'll see if I can do a four lap average, which means you have to be consistent. The car changes quite a bit. It's it's surprisingly realistic in how you have to adjust the car to make it make it work over the four laps. We do get one warm up lap at the start. Yeah, luckily no pace notes for me today. Try to scrub my brain of yesterday. around nice warm-up lap nothing too crazy the stands are packed for qualifying as long as I don't make a huge mistake I mostly just want to get in front of the really slow cars because there are a lot of slow cars I would love to not start in the middle of the pack if possible but I'm gonna go a bunch stiffer on the front roll bar and uh, we'll have to play with the rears Ugh, understeer a lot there it's turn three for some reason is the tricky one for me. 
this turn, for some reason, it's where the car wants to step out from me, especially on a full tank. So we should be okay. I'm going to bump up the roll bar one more click there, and we'll, uh, we'll just cross our fingers it sticks into turn one. But here we come to take the green flag for lap average. We won't get the lap speeds, unfortunately, but you will get an average running for every single one. We'll come into turn number one. Ugh, flat out. No lift. Right out to the wall, just trying to arc it. Keep it nice and smooth so that we don't scrub off any speed. Understeering a little bit there through turn two, but it's all right. And down the back stretch, we'll see what I get up to. Should be quite fast here. Not quite 240, though. I don't think we have a tailwind today. Coming to turn three. I did lift the throttle ever so slightly there. Just right on the razor's edge of grip. Come through turn number four. It's really hard to anticipate it, but I was right on that very edge. And come across the line for the first lap. 227.3, not quite pole speed, but we'll try again. I did lift a little bit on that lap. But now I need to do much better to raise that average. Not understeering as much through turn number two. Fuel light comes on right out to the wall. All right, I'm gonna keep the bars where it is. I hope it sticks. Come into turn number three, chuck it in. Just don't want any kind of correction, just nice and smooth. That was all right, I scrubbed off a little speed on the exit though. Get right to the line. Come through turn four. Not so bad. I'm going to put a little bar into it for turn one. We'll come across the line. Oh, it's a bit better. 227.9. Right. Floated into turn number one. It feels pretty good there. It's very neutral. Right down to the line. Sweep it on out. I'm going to get rid of some of the rear bar just to avoid any kind of accident down here into turn three. We're on the lap number three, one more to go. Throw it in, I was a bit early on the turn in there. Hold it flat though, scrub off a bit of speed on the exit because of that. All right, back onto the front stretch. We'll start the final lap, back up on the rear bars just to click. Come across the line, 228.2. I might be going for pole here, I don't know. Well, it was a bit late for the turn in, but able to get it down. This is actually, I think, my best run I've done around here. Flat out. Get rid of that bar for turn three. Final lap. A bit wider on the entry. There we go. That was a lot better that time. Didn't scrub off nearly as much speed. We'll come through turn four. This could be it. I didn't think I'd be able to get up front, but we're definitely going to be in a good spot. But will it be the pole coming to the line? There it is. <laughs> I've never done a 228 average. That's so cool. All right. On the pole. On the pole. I think it's a bit faster than the real pole. Although it might be close, but remember, we're running 1995 physics. Yeah, in all my testing, I've done like mid 227s. So I was feeling pretty good about, you know, top five maybe, but certainly not on the pole. Imagine going that fast for real, yeah. And they did in these kind of cars, which is nuts. But, oh boy, I think that's much, I mean, I don't remember what my speed was last year, but I think it is much, much better than last year. Could be the weather too, the weather does affect things. So maybe we've got a really good track today for my setup. My race setup is not extremely different from that one, so. All right, so let me load up my race setup. And we'll go out and do a couple quick laps along. Oh, let's quickly look though, but Ryan Axelson gets the pole two tenths of a second, or two and a half tenths over Danny Sullivan. Sorry, two and a half tenths miles an hour. Is that how you would say it? Over Danny Sullivan, ahead of John Andretti. So we got the Andrettis, two of them up front. Mario's not too far back either. So we might see a, a lot of Andretti today. Then second row will be Michael Andretti, Ari Leyendijk, and Bobby Ray Hall with the third row as Mario Andretti. Alan Sir Jr. and Eddie Cheever. It's a pretty good, pretty good lineup, dare I say. All right, but I will do a quick lap of warm up just to feel the race setup again. So we'll definitely play with the tools a lot today. Um, if you're unfamiliar, above the fuel number there on the dashboard, we've got the uh, the different bar settings. So I do have brake bias, which I'll just leave pretty much there the whole race. A little backwards to uh, make sure we don't spin 
Actually, that might induce a spin, but we shouldn't need the brakes in most scenarios. But then I've got the rear and the front bars. Making the bar stiffer in the back will make the car turn more, especially on the exit. Making it softer will make the car understeer more, especially on the exit. And then on the front side, making it stiffer will make the car understeer a bit more on entry. Lowering the front bar would make it understeer or oversteer a bit on entry. So you can kind of tune depending on where your car is. The thing is, you don't get a lot of visual clues or you only get visual clues. You don't get any other clues as to what the car is doing. So you have to be very, very on top of it, much like real life. Yeah, for the shifter and all the buttons, I've got my button box too. It's actually using, I'm using Joy to Key, which is like a joystick keyboard emulation program. So when I do joystick uh, or different uh, inputs with joysticks, it actually triggers a keyboard press, and that's what I have set up in the sim. So. You know, Chris, I've never actually seen the Danny Sullivan Miami Vice episode. Um, I know that he did that, and I've seen like little clips from it, but I've, I've never watched that. I haven't really watched that show before. All right, but passing lap traffic today is going to be the big thing. Ooh, the car got a bit, a bit loose there. So this is Eddie Cheever on a warm-up lap. But yeah, it's all going to be about getting through the lap traffic and... Uh, just avoiding things. It's on full damage this year, like I've been talking about, so, um, you know, I really can't, I can't hit anything. If I hit anything, the race is almost certainly over. Uh, that being said as well, if the AI have crashes, which they do, we will get yellow flags uh, for pretty much anything. And um, in my testing, there hasn't been a lot of yellow flags. It's actually been pretty green, but there have been a couple, so... But we'll have to see. All right, coming to the pits. So I think we're pretty much ready to go with the, uh, the Indy 500 here. 200 laps. I have to remember to finish this race, most of all, especially if Michael's not doing well. And Danny on the pole, our, our second place now, he's appearing as a rival in the championship, at least early on here. So... Michael's the most important one since he's so far in the in the points. So if he's back there and falling back, that'll be good for me. But I, I got to finish in front of him today, and uh, but I got to get there. And certainly, there's a lot of time to make adjustments to the car if we need to throughout. We've got a ton of pit stops. Every 33 laps is what I want to try to hit with the pits. So um, if we can get to 33, 66, 100, about. And then 133, 166, we will get to 200. So that's really the plan for the fuel. If we get yellow flags, we'll have to just figure it out on the fly. I can only get about 34 laps on a green run. So we really can't stretch it too far without doing a lot of saving. And that really hurts you at Indy because uh, it's mostly flat out the whole time. So it'll be quite the race. But in the... Immortal words of Paul Page. I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps. It is indeed, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for that. We'll roll off the grid here. All right. The bars are all kinds of weird, but I will sort that out. We go pretty stiff on both front and back. I might go one click down on the rear. I might go down on the rear. Just to... uh Make sure we'll be okay, but I gotta try to try to get away off the grid here. If you missed the intro. Josh, the bassist in the chat, reached out to Paul Page and got him to record that. And uh, I saw the the conversation with him. He seemed very nice about it, which is amazing. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Josh. It's the first clip of the GP Laugh soundboard. You're absolutely correct. All right, I've never started on the pole, in a, at least in a long time, so I don't quite know what to expect. Hopefully I can get a launch. I believe if I pass the pace car, I will get a black flag. We definitely don't want that. Um, mechanical failures and stuff are on, just like the last races. If I do get a mechanical failure in the first stint, I am going to restart the race. Uh, if the AI do something really bizarre and it's not my fault, 
uh, in the first stint, and we'll restart the race. But otherwise, we are, are full, full realistic. Just want to make it a good show. If something weird happens on the first lap, that would be kind of silly to, to stop it all. But otherwise, we'll try to see what happens, and uh, hopefully I don't make any mistakes. Oh, had a bit of a jump there. Green's out. Oh, my God. I got the worst start ever. All right. Get it up the gears. I got a really, really bad start as everybody streams by on the right side. Come down to turn number one. All right. On the inside, fifth gear. Getting swallowed up here. I'm going to turn two. I feel very understeery. Just throw a little more rear bar into it. Wouldn't really want to do that in the corners. But there we go. Was well, everybody stacking up in front a little bit? Got a great run. There's nowhere really to go. I don't want to go four wide, three wide on the first lap. We'll come down to turn number three. That was a terrible start. They just jumped me there, but no black flags or anything, so we are in it. Coming around turn four, and it looks like, is that Ari Leyendike out front? Michael Andretti's right behind me. I've got John Andretti. Both Porsches, actually. Where did Teo come from? Well, on the front straightaway, getting up the inside of John Andretti. Come down into turn number one. Oh, he's actually going to hold it out there. And Michael as well, being overtaken on the outside. Coming to turn number two. Oh, they're squeezing me towards the bottom here. Fall behind Emmo and back to eighth then. Not a good start. I have a lot of speed on the back stretch. It's all right. Just let things settle. People get file, single file, and it'll be a bit easier. I got Rick Mears right behind me now. Just come through turn three. The car felt very neutral there. Down the front stretch. Yeah, I'm like losing a bit on the front stretch, and on the back stretch, I'm so much faster. That's super bizarre. I'm being very, very cautious right now. Just... Just let things string out. Nobody's running away, which is good. That's a very good thing. But somebody just overtook for the lead, I believe. Ari is out front there. But yeah, a massive run on Sullivan. So Sullivan off second place or really had the pole coming into the first corner. Is falling back. Allenser Jr. is right in front of me now. All right, just two two wheels below the line in most most corners. I'm streaming up behind Allenser Jr. Up the inside, across the line. Side by side, coming down into turn number one. A little bit of a lift. Get it settled in there. Oh, he pinches me a bit, but I got it. All right, so I can pass on the front stretch, but some of the cars seem really quick there. So everybody's sorting each other out. <laughs> that was a lot like... <laughs> I just watched that documentary last night, the Peter Revson one. Very reminiscent of the uh, Peter Revson start. What was that, 72, 71? Where Mark Donahue got a massive jump on him on the front stretch. Okay, settling, settle in now. John Andretti in front of me, Michael Andretti in front of him. And it looks like Ari might be falling back, so he took the lead early, but... Get a great run here down the back stretch. I've got like turbo speed on the back stretch. There must be wind or something of uh, tailwind. I don't know, but I'll take it. But they seem pretty quick on the front stretch, so it's gonna keep things interesting. But get around Johnny Andretti then. So into the top five in the opening stint. A lot of fuel left in the car. A long ways to go yet, and uh, we haven't we haven't started hitting any lap traffic. So lap number five there. E5. All right. Let's see if I can chase down Ari. And we'll see. We'll see how folks get through. So the lap traffic has been kind of a mixed bag, as we've seen at the other races of the season. The the other AI, sometimes they get stuck up behind. Sometimes they can get through it a lot quicker than I can. So it actually works itself out quite often to be um, to be pretty fair, which you don't see quite often in Sims. It's, it's cool that uh, I don't really get this massive advantage or something through lap traffic. Usually, once in a while, they'll get stuck. 
and uh, it's just part of it. But I'm, I'm much quicker than Ari here, too, down the back stretch, at least. We'll come down to turn three, though. I'm not quite close enough this time to make the move. Ooh, the car feels a bit sketchy there. Might actually add a bit more front bar. Sometimes you can get just a little too much bite, and it'll get the car into a slip, and then from there you're kind of a lost cause. But pulling in Ari here, real Indy 500 winner of 1990 right in front. He kind of happened into it as well. He was there. He was definitely competitive and deserves the win, but it, uh, he didn't show up until late in the race. But there we go. Just a massive top speed over him down the back stretch. We'll take fourth position away. So Michael Andretti in front. Emerson Fittipaldi leads the way from Teo Fabi. Porsche in second position. I've not seen the Porsches that fast yet. Here comes Ari behind me. Oh, he's looking towards the inside, but he's not going to have enough to get it here. Just a little breath of the throttle to keep it safe. I'm staying plenty clear of the walls. You just really can't risk getting close as I understeer a whole bunch there. Alright, so a quarter tank into it. The car got really light there. Quarter tank in, and uh, I think we're doing fine on fuel. It says I've got about 25 laps. The number... In the center of my dashboard is the prediction of how many laps I have to go, but I guess very, very uh, on brand for the time, and it really reacts to you like lifting the throttle and things. So it's not, it's not the easiest thing to use as a gauge, but it gives you a rough idea how many more laps I can go on fuel. These three out front, though, we'll see the gap is 4.1 seconds to Emerson right now. And uh, we'll see what that's like crossing the line, if I'm gaining or losing. Yeah, very clean so far. No yellows or anything yet. Quite often there'll be a yellow off the start, but if there isn't, then uh, we might be in for quite a lot of green running, at least for the time being. All right, I think I lost just a tiny bit on that lap to MO. But Michael and Teo going side by side in front. I think we got a lapped car coming back towards me. So the first of the lap traffic. And we'll see how that changes things. If I can catch up to this pack in front. They seem a little bit quicker than me and just on a raw pace. We got Willie T. Ribs right at the rear of the pack, unfortunately. Let's see if I can scoot around him, though. There we go. First car passed on the day. All right. As long as I don't go a lap down, all's fair. You never know when you're going to get a yellow flag. And uh, we've got plenty of time to figure this out, so... Just try to get through this traffic on the first few times by while there's a full field. Get underneath Buddy Lazier there. Oh, he's going to pinch me. That was sketchy. Ari's coming up from behind now. All right, get in front of Buddy. Ari's right in my slipstream. I'm going to see if I can make the pass here on Groff. So come into turn number one. Ari's right there. My God. He's thinking of pouncing while I'm getting caught up in the traffic. Lost a bunch of time to MO that lap. So we got a couple cars in front. Oh, I think it's AJ Foyt on the outside there. He's not doing well today. Occasionally we'll see him jump up the, the order, but he's falling quite far back. Dean Hall right here in front. And my nemesis, Roberto Guerrero. Put him a lap down. So Ari's right on my tail again. Come down into turn number one. My car feels very neutral. Is Ari's going to look... Come on, Ari. My car feels very neutral. I'm going to take a little rear bar out of it. 
Oh, it's such a closing speed on these two, but side by side, Tony Bettenhausen and one of the Menards cars. There's two, there's Gary. Might be Gary that he's side by side with his, his brother. Get onto the front stretch though. Sometimes the AI like to go two and three wide, which makes it extra sketchy, but we should be able to pass these three. Dobson in front. We'll come to turn number one. Narrow line, it makes it a bit more sketchy, but able to get through there. So we've got another car coming up. John Andretti's back. So I've been quite slow through some of the traffic, so John's looking to pounce. All right, I've got clear track here, though, at least for a minute. Let's see if I can put a gap on these guys behind. Well, busy stuff getting through the traffic, especially on the first lap, but hopefully it will uh, clear up a bit from there. It's Ari, oh, big run up the inside, man. Didn't quite get me though. I think catching Poncho Carter here, come up the inside. So we're getting close to a half tank of fuel. The car's handling is definitely changing a bit, and I'm I'm oversteering a lot more than I thought I would. So I'm just having to be really careful about that right now to make sure. But if you lose the rear end of the car, there's really no getting it back around here. We've got Didier Thays here in Granatelli's bright orange machine come up the inside. It's always really sketchy right against the line. All right, that's Gary. So I think um, Jim Crawford has a black helmet and Gary has a colored helmet. Get past Gary Bettenhausen in the other Menards car. So 10.6 seconds off the lead now, so I've lost a whole bunch of time through all the traffic there. But I've lost Ari behind me just a little bit, and I don't know where John is. 11.6 seconds now. Coming up to Al Unser Sr. Second Patrick Racing car, all white, white and brown. It's a terrible looking car in my opinion. Man, it's really, really light through turn four. I'm like very worried. I'm at a, I might start adjusting the bars just for that turn. Oh, up to third. What happened? Who was in front of me? <laughs> is it Fabi? Is Fabi out? All right, here comes Ari coming up behind. As something's happening. Yeah, Teo Fabi out of the race. Oh, the Porsche gives it up. He was so quick. So that gives me third. Just reduce that rear bar a little bit. Because Ari is all over me. He really wants it. Well, if he, if he goes for a move, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it hard. But here he comes up the inside, Lion Dyke. Let him get in front. Sometimes they like to come up, and if you're in the wrong spot, they'll hit you. As John Andretti's now thinking about it, but Ari Lion Dyke gets around me here. It's all right. Not all hope is lost, but I didn't adjust my bars again. Understeering through turn number two, I should have the speed down the back stretch. Fabi always had bad luck, especially with that Porsche team. Ooh, right to the wall there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what did I do? Wrong one. There we go. That's not good. I gotta make sure I hit my right buttons. Oh, here comes John around the outside. And Rick Mears is right behind him. We'll come into turn number two, understeering a whole bunch there. Rick, ah, man. I'm being quite tentative. I just feel like the car is much more neutral than I was expecting, so I'm worried it's going to just loop on me at some point. 
Might put more wing into it. I'm so fast down the back stretch. It might be a good idea to put a little more rear wing in the car. So I'm falling back a bit in the order right now, down to sixth. Well, that's bad. Fabi out of it means Andretti's going to be much more likely to score big today. Yeah, maybe the tires are going. I'm not sure what's happening. The car feels really like sketchy, but. Now, the tires aren't worn too much. Temperatures look all right. It's a little cold on the right front, actually. So that tire temps, that's, that's telling me the car is oversteering. You can see the right rear is, is much hotter than the right front. It could mean also like the, the tire compounds and stuff aren't the same way or the temperatures aren't quite right, but generally they should be quite even on the right, uh, the right side. So I think I'm definitely oversteering or a tendency to oversteer which is, if you want anything at Indianapolis, it's understeer. It's all right. We got a whole day to work on it. Plenty of race to go. As long as I don't go a lap down, we'll be, uh, we'll be all right. So 170, so about 10 more laps till pits or the earliest that we'd want to pit. And I've got to think about making a change to the car. I think I might add a little rear wing. I'm so fast down the back stretch. I am I am not super fast in the front stretch, but I think I can afford a little more downforce. That might just help make the car just feel that little bit better. That could help me uh, make sure I don't have a big big one at some point. Danny Sullivan's behind me now. Alan Sir Jr. off of him. We're coming up on Hero in front. here in front. I'm not going to quite get to him before turn one. Just have to follow him through. Uh, both one and two. He's not slow. You get to some of the faster lapped cars and they're not like super off the pace so it becomes quite tricky to figure out when to pass. turn three I'm I'm so sketched out by the car in turns three and four right now it's it's so dodgy feeling I go even stiffer on the front maybe I've got the car set up to be pretty understeery now with almost full front bar and uh, the rear I'm jumping in and out of quite soft at this point all right bit of pack uh, a pack in front of me and it looks like mirrors and Andretti are dicing it up there. We've got Buddy Lazier here in front of me. It's the other yellow car in the race. We've get Lazier coming into turn four. I don't like being on the apron. Up on the apron, you'll you'll really like un unload the car with the camber on the track, and that can bring you to spin as well. graph here. I just want to be confident with the car so I can really try to put laps together, but right now I'm, I feel very tentative with the whole thing.
coming to the front stretch here. Oh no! Oh no! I've just messed up big time. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> I like hit something and it minimized everything. I like hit a button on my keyboard and it just minimized the whole thing. So I couldn't see at all what it was happening. I couldn't also I tried to pause it. I couldn't pause it. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm going to restart. I mean, I'm in the I'm in my rules the first stint, but that's so disappointing. We're going to restart it. But I'm super disappointed. I'm sorry I did that for everybody. <laughs> I thought, I don't know why it did that. Yeah, now I'm pressing the keys and it does what I expect. But for some reason, it just minimized the whole thing. Pro streamer here. Yeah, I, let's see, I got a new keyboard like a few weeks ago and Guess I'm not adjusting. I'm trying to set everything up on my screen again. Well, that was turning out to be a really interesting race too, which is such a bummer because I guess you'll be able to see here today how different these races can be. With with the randomness of IndyCar racing. <laughs> yeah, that was super bizarre. So I like went to go hit, I wanted to change my wings and um, I wanted to change my wing settings. Oh, let me pause for a second. I wanted to change my wing settings, uh, you know, so that when we get to the pit stop in like just a few laps there, that I was going to be able to uh, to change them. But I don't know what happened. That's so weird because now if I hit it, yeah, it's it's doing what I expect. I don't know why it why it did that. Well. That was my practice start, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's like functions on this keyboard which um, let you do things like minimize the screen and all that, but like I'm hitting that key and it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's super disappointing. I, I apologize, but I guess we will start again. It was still, it's within my rules, right? Within the first stint, although we were right at the end of it, and that was like the hardest part of the race. So, I guess we will start again. But for those of you that are catching the, uh, the VOD, we will, we will kick off our Indy 500 again here. Maybe I'll just restart the stream here. I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps. Alright. Forget about that, we'll just start again. So those 30 or so laps were uh, just a dream. All right, no touching the keyboard while the sim is running, I guess. All right, let me get the bars set. Um, front, yeah, we're gonna keep it stiff this time. So it should be the same way. It's it's really I just shift hard to restart the race. So it should be pretty much the same everything. All right, I need to be as careful as I was initially as well. So it's so tough to get into that mindset, but it's a brand new race, <laughs> and assuming we get through it without any technical issues. Yeah, if that was late in the race, I guess I'd have to call it a uh, you know a, a breakdown or something like. But since it was so early on, it's still, I established those rules before that uh, if something weird happened, we would restart. So let's hope I can get to the first pit stop and we'll see if anything's different this time. But here we come. Try not to get as bad of a start. I still get a jump on me. Green's out. We're underway. I got a much better start that time, though. All right. Come down to turn one, but they're all just so much faster on the front stretch. All right. Come down to turn number one. We're in sixth gear here, just paint the line. Well, it's Ray Hall on the outside this time. I don't think we saw Ray Hall at all last time. Come through to really understeery there. My God. All right. 
but a great run. I got it on Ari as well. Ari's not getting off to the start he got last time at all. So we'll come into turn three. Car feels fine. So up into fourth right off the start. Much better start this time than I got previously. It should be the same weather and everything, so I should I, I probably will have the same issues as the fuel burns, but I, I know a little bit better now what it's going to do, so I can hopefully anticipate it and uh, see if I can get a good start here. Yeah, I must have looked really weird on stream like I just forgot <laughs> what I was doing. But I, I literally just went to desktop and all I saw was the desktop and I could hear the game. It's the worst feeling. All right, we'll get past John Andretti then got off to the start. I thought it was Teo for a second. But get around John. And into turn three, chasing Sullivan now. So up to third off the start. We got Alistair Jr. leading the way. It's so different. And I have no idea where Michael is, but he doesn't look to be fast as of yet. Oh, the capture froze. Okay, well, at least it's it didn't look like I was too dumb. Honestly, I'm. we did, um, if you were here last season when I did, when was that? Was it the practice for the, uh, the all-star race? We had one big bug. Oh, here's Michael. We had one big bug last season where I was practicing and the car basically exploded. Um, and I'm shocked that it doesn't happen more often because this game is a little buggy now and then. I've been very lucky so far. And that, that wasn't a game-related bug. That was just me or my keyboard or something. I'll figure that out for the future, but I'm surprised it hasn't happened more, to be honest. All right, Michael's coming up behind me, and uh, he seems pretty quick, but I'll see what I can do here to hold him off without putting myself at too much a risk. Oh, but that's not much to hold off when he just drives around me. All right, so Michael gets around and up front. But I've got a big slipstream on him down the back stretch. It's going to be interesting if we do that the whole race. No, oh, he's got a lot of speed. He's going to come around the outside, maybe. Come into turn four. I'll let him have it. It's fine. It's so early. Whoa, the car got really pointy there. I know. BS Customs. I, the, uh... I just want, like, a simple keyboard that doesn't do anything fancy, and it seems like it's impossible to find, especially for like a Bluetooth one. All right. All right. Understeering, oversteering. Car feels just as bad as it did the first time. But we'll figure it out as we go. It would have been, would have been a little too much cheating to back out and uh, fix the setup <laughs> before the race. So at least here, I still got the same problem to deal with. And uh, I will pause the game to make adjustments to the setup for the pit stop. I think that's fair. So that we don't have to worry about... I won't touch the keyboard at all. <laughs> so Fabi's now behind me. So, okay, it was John Andretti that got around me right off the start. And then I passed him back. And now Teo Fabi is coming back up. But we'll see if he has... He might not have a mechanical. It's, it's different every time. Uh, it's, it's what makes this sim so much fun to do full seasons in. But up front we've got Alancer Jr. with Danny Sullivan chasing and Michael Andretti behind. I've slipped back into fourth and I've got Teo Fabi all over my rear wing. Coming to turn number one. Really let off the throttle that time. Thought he was going to go for the pass. Here he comes up the inside into turn two maybe. No. steer there. I don't think I hit the Windows key. I think it literally activated. The key I pressed was the macro to minimize things, but I have it on to use the F keys, so I don't know why it would have done the macro. He is riding my gearbox. You're absolutely right. He might make the pass this time. I'm just a bit too slow. Here he comes, up the inside maybe. Come on, just take it. There you go. It's all right, we'll figure this out. I'll figure it out. I think I'm gonna just put a little more downforce on the car overall when we get to the pit stop. And that way I can uh, just 
actually go flat through the corners, or mostly flat. So right now I'm lifting a lot. Across the line, so 192 laps to go. At least we weren't super far into the race. That would have been the worst. Beam. Running away just a little bit. But we're going to catch up to the lap traffic somewhat soon. Seems like Alistair Jr. is so fast. He was, I think, behind me, right? In the in the other race, so. Finally seeing some Alistair Jr. prowess. He was so good in the 90 season. Really, he hasn't featured yet in Phoenix or Long Beach. Pulled in a little bit, so I think Unser Jr. is hitting traffic now, if I was to guess. Let's stiff in the front a little bit, see if that helps. Michael Andretti just got around Sullivan for second. Of course, my second try here, Andretti is going to be super fast. Coming up to the first lap cars, we got one of the Menards cars in the back here. Looks like it's Gary Bettenhaus in there. Get around to him, Alancer Jr. or Alancer Sr. in the white car up here. And he's slowing down Fabi quite a lot. Might actually get a run at Fabi here. Coming down the front stretch, staying in slipstream. Should come down to turn number one. So we're getting towards half tank of fuel again. wide maybe down the back stretch that's uncomfortable right against the line with the grass Fabi's right on my outside we'll come down into turn three though narrow quite narrow there it's a little much for the first stint I would say so we'll come in to turn four we got Poncho Carter in front Fabi's gonna cut me cut down in front of me and take the spot back all right yikes that's a lot for the first 20 laps of the race. Get around Poncho Carter, though. Poncho Carter spotter, I think, for David Malukas now, if I'm not mistaken, in IndyCar. One of those all-time experienced drivers now turned spotters. Didier Day is in front here. It's the blindingly bright orange car. Around him. <laughs> yeah. I won't stay too close to Fabi because, yes, he might, he might just break down suddenly. It's funny. There's not really a setting in the AI to make them break down more often. Like, there's a few different settings that kind of, uh, that kind of do it. All right, there we go. Up the inside of Willie T. Ribs and Brayton. I think if you make the AI more aggressive, they might break down more often. But there's not like a breakdown setting. But it's so funny that it just works 
works the way it does in real life, or at least you see the things that match real life, or the Porsches break and stuff. Get up the inside of Randy Lewis. Yeah, Fabi's making the most of this uh, second go at it. Buddy Lazier, we'll get him. He's doing a bit better this time. All right, so getting around the lap traffic, it's a bit less... I mean, I guess there was that one side-by-side -side moment, but otherwise it's been a little less chaotic is good. Got Tony Bettenhausen in front. He's going to be very slow there. Oh, it's a bad place to catch somebody. But get onto the back stretch. I should have him easily here. No problems. Alright, so half tank at this point, and uh, car feels just as bad as it did last time, so I think I will want to adjust the wings in the pit stop. Definitely will want to adjust, probably add just some rear wings. So that will make the car understeer more naturally. Also just give me a bit more downforce overall so that I can maybe hang it out around the turns. Try to get going flat. And I've got the speed on the back stretch that the extra downforce shouldn't hurt me too much. The question is though how much to add. Probably won't go too extreme, but maybe like a quarter of a degree or something? I don't know. Scott Goodyear then in front. Get the inside of him. I just feel like I've got a rocket boost down the back stretch. Well, some of the lap traffic specifically is just very slow. Oh, thank you, Harold. Greetings from Salzburg. Grusty. I studied for uh, six months in, in Salzburg. It's a wonderful town. Big fan. The car is, is neutral once again through three. And what I mean by neutral, if you're kind of newer to indie style oval racing, is it doesn't oversteer or understeer. You feel like you're kind of in a line. And it, it is a good thing, but it, for me, because it's so hard to predict oversteer in IndyCar 2, it's it's scary when you get neutral. Like, turn one there, that was understeery, so, but not too understeery. So that felt decent. But when you get into the corner and the car doesn't really do anything, you're worried it could jump and oversteer at any second. So that's where neutral becomes kind of scary for this sim. So we'll come into the corner. And it turns well, but like if it turned any more, it would start to spin. So I gotta maybe dial that out. Turn four feels the very, very much the same way. It just kind of gets into the corner and, and 
doesn't understeer at all, so the next thing is oversteer. It, it, I don't even know if you could watch and, and kind of tell. It's very much a feeling thing. It's based off of how much I'm turning the wheel, how much throttle I have in it. We've got some company coming up behind me here. I have a feeling it's MO. Yep, it is MO. I'll take a little more rear bar out of it, see if I can get it to understeer just a slight amount. I want it to understeer just the, ever so slightly into the corners. Yeah, that was a bit better. See, it's understeering a little bit there. Fort Fairfield, Maine. I've never been to Fort Fairfield, Maine, but I have been to Maine quite a bit. Was I scrubbed the wall there? That's no good. Down to 13 gallons. So this is about when everything went wrong last time. So far, so good this time. Emerson's hanging out back there. We're about the same speed. But yeah, I am losing time to the leaders. Here comes Mo up from behind. It's all right. We're going to put a little more wing, rear wing in the car on the pit stop and uh, see if that changes things. See if I can get a little more speed out of it. This feels a bit like if you were in here last season when we did the Pocono race. I just wasn't able to get quite enough speed out of the car to match Michael. And he was able to win, but otherwise, you know, the race went fine. So I hope it's not one of those scenarios today, but we'll, we'll have to see how it all plays out. Here comes Mo up the outside. Man, they love that pass into turn one, the long way around. All right, Mo will take it. It's salty, I took his number one away. Right out to the wall, man. I gotta stop doing that. It was way too close. Big run on Mo down the back stretch. Just sit in behind. So coming to turn three, we got three lap cars coming up on. I think the slowest three. Get him on the front stretch here. So Mo gets stuck in behind. Bettenhausen, I believe. All right, we'll follow Emma through. Here comes Al. Yeah, I've got a lot of understeer right now, but I don't know. The car, I just thought I don't feel comfortable with it right now, and I think a little more downforce is going to help me out overall. Get that little more confidence in the corners. See, it's very, very neutral there in turn three. Oh, we got a car peeling off into the pits. This Hero, that's a bit early for a pit stop. Hero might be having a uh, an issue. Lap 173, we got to do another five or six laps. Mike Graf here in front. He's got a really bad turn into turn two. Emmo's held up behind the other Menards car. So I catch back up to him. Follow him through. We've got Poncho in front of Jim Crawford as well. We're 23 seconds off the lead. We're falling quite far behind at this point, over a half a lap off. It means the leader is passing the line, or already passed the line at that point. So we're falling off quite a bit. Eight gallons to go on the fuel tank. We gotta be careful for cars pitting. That's always one of the uh, sketchy parts here. At, at this version of Indy, is cars will be taking the racing line and then suddenly peel off in front of you. So you have to be a bit careful through turn four. We've got Thay's way on the outside there. 
Should be able to get him before turn two. Ward in front. I, I keep on saying Wood, I think, in the other races. But I think it's Ward in front. We've got a big run. It's kind of a sketchy side-by-side -side coming into turn one, though. Dab of the brakes. Boys, well, so we now got Jeff Andretti behind me. Big understeer through turn two. It should be easy to get these two. Alright, five gallons. So, we can make it around here with just about a gallon of fuel, maybe even less. I don't know, it's just over a gallon to make a lap, but we'll pit in a few more laps. Just want to get to that 33 lap mark. And uh, make sure we did the full stint here. Whoa, right in there. <laughs> I just did not anticipate that correctly, but I got up the inside of him. Right, fuel light is on, so we're getting down to it. So John Andretti's then right behind me. He's going to take uh, take a look up the inside here, coming down into turn number one. Uh, really, it's an interesting kind of start to this so far. Just falling way back. I have to think it's the weather, because in some of my testing, I was I was doing pretty well. The car just would feel a lot more concrete, but Michael Andretti in the pits already. I wish I could <laughs> be neat if he was out, but I think he's just taking his pit stop. All right, Michael Andretti's done with his pit stop already, and I'm still coming around. I think we got two more laps. I'm going to stretch it. Uh, I'll actually be a bit quicker than them as well. 167, so we did make it to the... Uh, lap to pit to do the strategy, but I'll probably do a couple more because I should be better on light fuel here, and you never know what can happen. Just having a little more fuel in the tank can be a good thing. Come out of the back stretch, though. Got under Willie T there and Randy Lewis. Pointy into turn three. It's all right. Alright, at least one more lap here, and uh, we got to make the wing change, so <laughs> unlike last time, I'm going to pause the game to do that, maybe on the back stretch. So come through turns one and two. Alright, just John Andretti in front now, everybody else is pit, and I should do it this time, just in case something weird happens and I have to go around again. But we'll come out of the back stretch, and I'll do a quick pause here. I would do it coming out of turn four, but you never know. Alright, so let me press the keys, and they just work for some reason now. All right, but we will increase the rear wing here. I'll go up 20, 0.25 degrees. Doesn't sound like a lot, but these things are very sensitive. So we'll see if um, that makes a difference. And if not, we got a bunch more time in this race to do everything. So we'll see. We'll see what that does. Hopefully that makes the difference that I feel just a bit more confident in going flat out and that the car is not going to just come out from under me. We'll come through turn four here, scoop down onto the apron. Now, 80 mile an hour pit speed. That would be the worst thing in the world to speed in the pits. Down to first gear, I'm a bit slow on the entry. And I almost still overrun it, but I get it. All right, first stint, underway. Yeah, Jan Bikas is in the field, too. I forget what his car looks like. I could have maybe said somebody else is wrong. Here comes Ari into the pits. Oh, that's so sketchy. Wait for him, though. All right, come on out. And uh, just won't speed. 80 mile an hour is the speed limit, and it's if you even hit 81 for a split second, it'll, it'll penalize you, so you have to be very careful about it. I'm 
being pretty conservative just to make sure I get it. All right, throttle up, out of the pits. Nobody behind me, I can slide up onto the track here. That's the nice thing about no warm-up lane. All right, so through the first pits and uh, back on the track, we got a bit more wing in it. <laughs> I can tell the car is a lot more understeery. But I think I've got ammo behind me, so I'm gonna beat ammo through the whole pit stop cycle. Just feeling out the car. What do I got under me now? I still get the front very stiff. I've got the rear quite soft, and I'm hoping I can go a little bit stiffer on the rear this time. Here comes MO. Yeah, understeering still there. I want to feel what it feels like in turn three now that my tires are slightly warmer before I really go adjusting things. But understeering a lot through turn two. Get it onto the back stretch. I still got top speed on him. Still able to pull away a bit here. I think it's Bobby Ray Hall in front coming out of the pits. It's a bit slow. I'm going to add bar for the first couple corners. Turns one and two don't seem to be a problem. It could be the wind direction. So we've got Dobson here. we got some cars coming out of the pits. Things get real weird when that happens. Ugh, lose the spot to Emerson. We'll get Bobby here. Achiever behind me is now going a lap down. We're next. We'll try to get Emo here down the back stretch. Big run, so come up to turn three, narrow on the inside. To get way out of it, make sure the car turns, doesn't understeer. All right, car is much more understeery now. The question is, can I get the speed out of it by going flat? And here comes Emerson up the inside. Almost clips me there as we turn in. We'll figure it out. We're going to figure the car out today, but it's it's not behaving so far. Worst thing I could do is be over aggressive and and crash it. So that's that's what I'm trying to avoid doing. A caution flag would be very nice right now as I got a nice run back up on Emerald as he gets stuck behind Tony. Get onto the front stretch here. Three wide, right against the pit wall. Yikes. Yeah, and they've got that. Now that I added a little wing, though, it's hurting me on the front stretch, at least. When we're side by side like that. Still understeering quite a lot. Hmm. I still have such a good draft on the back stretch. Almost. Almost enough to pass him there. Ah, quite an interesting start to this one. Has not gone completely to plan. Actually gained on the leader a little bit that time, which is good. The car does not is not behaving exactly like I'd like today. Emo gets held up behind Goodyear. We'll get both of them here down the back stretch. Hopefully, there we go. Get in front of Emerson Fittipaldi. So back up to sixth. That was actually pretty nice through turn three that time. So we got Dean Hall here in front. We'll slide up. Get a bit of a slipstream on the front stretch, but Emo's going to be coming with a head of steam. But because of the slipstream with the lapped car is able to keep it out front, come back into turn number one. A bit tight on the line. Here comes Emo up the inside. Come on. Cover him off through turn two, maybe. We're really close to each other. Don't want to come in together. Right, there we go. Through turn two. We should be able to run away a bit here down the back stretch this time. So we got Al Unser in front. Just scoop below him coming into turn three. some more clear track up here okay all right a bit tense there for a minute Alancer Jr. leads over Michael Andretti so if Alancer Jr. wins could be a, an okay thing for the championship just 
because he hasn't really done well so far. But Michael's in second. <laughs> it's going to kill me with that consistency. Ooh, a crash! Teo Fabi crashes the car. The yellow flag is out. I'll go down on the boost. We're very early in the stint, so pitting doesn't make sense right now. Well, we'll get packed up and then we'll take a look at what happened, but that was pretty close to in front of me. As Fabi smacks the wall coming out of turn two. <laughs> Fabi's looking to make this a show, but that's good. I was I was getting close to going a lap down there, and uh, that's going to save me from that. We'll have to see how many lapped cars are between me and the leader. Danny Sullivan is out, so maybe they had a coming together. That's going to get me up into the top five, top four. To see, can I pass these guys? Nope. Uh oh. We'll have to see what's going on with the la or the cars and the pace car and all this. Oh no! <laughs> We've got a tr a block track. Oh boy. It should clear up as soon as Fabi's car gets cleaned up, but this is going to make things kind of weird. Come on, there we go. Everybody, wake up. Yeah, we'll see the replay. But, so maybe Danny Sullivan crashed into him after he stopped and there was just a big mess. Yeah, almost a red flag scenario. That happens sometimes and weird things can happen. Like I said earlier in the stream, it's I've been very lucky so far for IndyCar 2 streams that I haven't had some bugs. But we'll see. It should be all set. Sometimes real weird stuff happens if the pace car comes by and laps you while something like that's going on. <laughs> Not restarting again now. No way. All right, we're coming around. We'll catch up to the pack, and then I'll, I'll pause and we'll take a quick look at the replay. We are through lap 44 at this point. 156 to go. So almost a quarter distance. And our first yellow flag for Teo Fabi and uh, Danny Sullivan, it seems, having a coming together. We're hanging back a bit because you, once the the cars catch the pack, they'll just slam on the brakes, and uh, you definitely don't want to be right behind somebody. We should be much closer this time, and I think the pack's right up there. Yeah. All right. Finally caught the pack. Oh, there's so many lapped cars. This The restart's going to be quite scary. All right. I'll take a quick peek at the replay and see what happened to old Fabi there. Yeah, it was a mess. Oh, there he is. I can see him spinning and crashing. All right. Yeah, just got loose by himself. We'll watch the whole thing. What happened, though? Comes through. Turn two. It's going to lose it. Boom. Something broke on the car. Loses the rear wheel. And now chaos is going to happen as cars in front get by. There's me on the left side getting by with Mo behind. And uh, I have to think Sullivan was coming through. Oh, Dean Hall stops for some reason. Rookie move. Some cars getting by. Oh, and Ray Hall hits him. Bobby Ray Hall's out because he hit. And then I'm going to guess Sullivan here is going to uh, make another mistake. Doesn't see the car of Ray Hall and smash it. This is why the track got blocked. Oh, and a few more cars. We're going to have a lot of cars out of it. Raul Boisel. Yeah, and that, that's where the track blocking kind of stopped and then everybody's coming around and getting packed up. So, just a few cars, maybe smoke lingering in the air, not able to see what's going on, and uh, causing a big pile up there on the back stretch. What did I study? It? So it was when I was uh, Harry in undergrad. Thank you for the, the super chat again. Um, when I was in undergrad, I spent like a semester and a summer over there just studying I mean I was studying history might not be surprising to folks <laughs> but yeah studied history and German while I was there 
great time. It was a long time ago, though, at this point. Yeah, a bit of the Arca breaks, but... Maybe there was fluid on the track, you never know. You never know. It happens quite often that the AI causes pileups. Like I said, I'm very surprised we haven't had more shenanigans. But that's going to cause a few cars to be out. So if we look at the order, Allenser Jr. leads from Michael Andretti and John Andretti in third. Man, how cool would it be for uh, John Andretti to, to win this? Emerson Fittipaldi back in fifth. And then we start with the lap down cars. So it's just the top five on the lead lap. We've got a lot of cars between us and the leaders. Just the top five here. And then we look further back. A lot of cars a lap down. Danny Sullivan's out of the race from that accident. Teo Fabi, Mike Groff, Raul Boisel. Hold on, Bobby Ray. Okay, I was going to say, Bobby Ray Hall better be out. Looks like Hiro Matsushita went out early. Randy Lewis is out as well. I think we saw in that crash. That took a whole bunch of cars out. Is Foyt in the top ten? Nice. We're going to go green next time by. So I'm in fourth. It's really just these five at this point. That was huge. But only one leader, Danny Sullivan, taken out. So it's good and bad. Good for me, I gained a spot. Bad because that's one person that could have potentially beat Michael Andretti in this one. Ah, Stiegel. I love Stiegel. I have the big Stein that I bought, or Krug, when I was over there. It's a fun town. I want to go back someday. It's been enough time now that I'm sure it's very different. <laughs> yeah, take a sip. Coffee and drinking coffee today. It's early enough. All right, so we're going to go back up on the boost, and I'm going to go one softer on the rear just to make sure things, because the tire pressures have come down. I just want to be careful here. We got Emerson right behind me, and I have a feeling he's going to get me on a jump, but I won't worry about it too much. I just got to try to pick my way through this lap traffic. Probably will get most of them on the back straight away and see see where that puts me towards the front. Um, but hopefully I can do a bit better now at staying on the lead lap. Alright, green's out. Should have started in second gear. That was my bad. We'll come down the front stretch to get the green flag. Emma didn't actually get a jump on me, which is very surprising, but it's going to be two, three wide. We'll come down to the first turn. Oh, take the line. So sketchy. Able to get by a whole bunch of them, though. That's going to help with my staying in front of Emma. We'll come into turn two. Just watch for chaos. As in real life, restarts are definitely a, a time where things can happen. Come down the back stretch. I really hope they don't make it three wide. Scoot by Buddy Lazier there. Yes, I was hoping I'd get up front here. There we go. Great restart. Getting past most of that traffic. Just a few more cars to sort out here. Ari trying to figure out the same thing as me. Come on to the front stretch, though. Side by side with Ari. Whoa, oh my God, he almost hit me. <laughs> I don't know if you saw his wheel right next to mine for a split second, but that is so sketchy. Up to third, then. John Andretti fell behind there. That's interesting. I think Jan Bikas here in front of me. I finally see good old Jan Bikas. Is Ari right there on my rear. He's so aggressive. Alright. I mean, Ari's a lap down this time, so I don't know what's going on there, but really fast on the back stretch, and it looks like I'm actually catching Michael in front here. What has happened? He seems really slow. Oh no, this is Dominic. I think. Yeah, this is Dobson. Okay. I thought that was Michael for a second. That would have been very surprising. I don't think anybody pit. No, because we're at that weird place where we kind of all just pit a few laps ago. And it would put us in a really weird strategy if we if we pit then. In real life, you might pit because of debris and stuff. If you ran over stuff, you might say, eh, it's probably better to get new tires on the car. But we don't have to worry about that here. Yeah, so past John... Emil got around him as well. 5.8 seconds off of Michael, or and, and Allenser Jr. specifically already. And uh, I think catching Allenser Sr. here. Uh, 
the the lap time split is pretty realistic. The fact that I am so much faster on the back straightaway feels a little odd, but it's how it's all worked out today. Yeah, but over a lap, the you know the, the speed differential between the front and back stretch, if you even that out, that feels pretty all right. That's Eddie Cheever getting around him. All right, clean air. We should have clean air for at least a few laps here and uh, can see what this car can do with the wings. The tracks overall, we've got a handful of cars out of it now, so there's gonna be a little less traffic than we had previously. Yeah, still understeering there. Gonna figure this out. Emo is, I think, the next car behind me, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty neutral through three and four. One and two is still understeering, so I'm gonna even click it up. One more notch on the rear bar for one and two. See if I can get it to turn in. Three, four though feels okay right now at that. Remember to go down on the rear bars there for turn three. All right, about 15 laps out from second pit stops, getting near half tank. Car feels better than it did at the start of the race, but it's still a bit slow, and I'm, I'm having to run it very stiff. Front and rear. I maybe need to try to go a step down and, and see if I can just cope with it. Losing half a second a lap, man. Alcer Jr. is really uh, turning the laps today. Up into third, though, I can't. Third is not a bad position to be in, so I can't look past that too far. Just a little bit of a lift into three. Flat out through four and, and two now. Actually kept the bar in at that time. Yeah, this is a, I do have an engine sound mod in, in here. And I, I've had a few people ask. I don't know at this point which one I have. I want to say it's one of Pavel's because most of the stuff I'm running is Pavel's mods and everything for the sim. Yeah, a, a great point, Ryan, that... So much happens in these races. We have such a long way to go. 500 miles is a really long ways. Mechanical failures, both the AI and myself, could very much still happen. Fuel strategy, yellow flags, and when people pit. Uh, even if they're faster, you know, I want, if I go a lap down, things are going to get a bit more dire. But I just pulled in six tenths of a second that lap. So I have to imagine lap traffic's coming back in. And that could also come into play with... Whoever can get through that the fastest. My car is coming alive a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit better about it. So there's... It feels dire at times, but you got to stick to it. Just try to make your race the best it can be and let things work themselves out. Just got to avoid the walls and uh, get to the end. pulled in a whole bunch. You know, everybody's going to be packed out. It's going to be kind of like the first lap again for the first time through the lap traffic just because of the caution. I 
Yeah, I don't think this is one of Ollie's sounds. Although I could be wrong. I I don't know if I kept any of the files that tell me which one it is. Because I know some had weird popping and stuff. This one worked well for me and I've used it for everything ever since. We've got underneath Gary Bettenhausen and Alan Sir Sr. in front here. Try to get back out to the outside and take the good line through turn number one. Back to 6.3 behind, so not doing too bad. The Poncho Carter will skate underneath him. Narrow up turn two a little. We'll take that, though. Behind Tony. It's alright. Alright, get him. Good news is pretty much everybody should still be on the same fuel strategy, so we don't have to worry about cars pitting randomly. It gets really chaotic when it's it's kind of a split in strategy. So I'm one click off maxing out the rear roll bar. And uh, things are feeling pretty good at the moment, but you just have to keep on top of it because fuel will really dramatically change the cars. I'll scoot underneath all three of them. Had to do it. That would have really cost me a lot of time. Thay's there. He's going to have his head spinning. Back to 6.8. Playing, playing... Back and forth with the leaders here through the lap traffic. Willie T slides up wide, lets me underneath. Yeah, that one that's one for the highlight reel, I think. Really chuck it into turn three. I'm feeling better about the car. I don't want to curse myself here, but at least where it's at right now feeling a bit more comfortable than I did at the start. So I'm not going to change. I'm going to stick with this for now. I'll uh, keep the wings. I think it was good to go a little bit more on the rear wing just to balance, get rid of some of the uh, oversteer. I mean, I, I could potentially add a, even another click of wing to see if I can lower that rear bar a bit. Or I guess more, more rear downforce is going to make me have to increase the bar. So I'm almost maxed out as it is. So I really would have to put a little more front downforce on as well to keep the balance in check. Hold on, this is Thais. Who did I pass a minute ago? <laughs> I'm hoping for the Andretti curse as well. Thank you, Nitron. Hoping I don't curse myself again here. So far, so good now. Dean Hall coming up real fast here. And underneath Guerrero. No dive bombing today, Guerrero. Alright, so we're getting close to the fuel window, but because of the yellow flag, we're actually going to go quite a bit deeper. And uh, if we got another maybe two caution periods, we might be able to skip a stop with some fuel saving. But with just the one, it's just going to make us maybe short fuel at the very end of the race. Which would be fine as well. As long as we, like up to a half a tank of fuel, it still makes sense to take tires. And uh, it won't take you any longer, so I'll have to see how it all works out. Long ways to go yet. I've fallen back a little bit more. I think raw pace, they're still just a bit faster than me. Rip on the steering wheel is <laughs> I'm all over it today. Kind of steering with my wrists with this tiny wheel. Yeah, 
Okay, we definitely don't want to pit early because right now we're going way faster than we will on full tanks. So we'd just really be hurting the overall pace by pitting. Just chuck it into turn three there. It's good. It sticks. We'd like to be a bit smoother than that. All right, 67 of 200 complete, setting P3. Still us five on the lead lap, I think. I can hope that Michael gets up there with Allenser Jr. and maybe they, they have a bit of a, a battle with each other. Could slow them both down. It's a really quiet track. I, because so many cars crashed out in that first incident, it's going to be some periods of just nothingness. All right, fuel lights on. Fuel light is on. So we should have about four laps of fuel when it comes on. See though, when the uh, when the leaders pit as well. I hope I can do at least a couple more laps than them so I get that at extra speed and we'll see the difference it makes. 11 seconds off now. We'll lead a couple laps as well, which is always good. As long as they pit first. A couple lapped cars coming towards me. Three gallons. Alright, Allenser Jr. in the pits. So get underneath these two lap cars. It's just waiting a little bit there to see if they were going to dive in. We'll at least get up to second for now. We've got some cars coming out, which is always going to make things interesting. Yeah. Is that MO? It's got to be. Danny's out of the race. Alright, I can go. I think I can go one more lap, and I think I'm going to do it just to just to maximize my fuel strategy at this point. I'm really hopeful that Michael's pitting right now. But I don't know if I'm going to be so lucky that he pits. He might, he might pit on the same lap. Yeah, he's staying out. No, he's in the pits. All right, good. All right, I'm doing one more lap here, and then we'll come in, fill her up for our second pit stop. 129 to go. We're really good on fuel right now. We're almost five laps ahead of schedule. one just for a moment we'll savor it I'm gonna get really close to the end of the fuel tank here but we'll be fine as long as I don't miss the pit lane somehow I'm gonna catch these two right at the end which is unfortunate come down the inside feel for the shifter don't use it at all here a little slow in the pits so tough. Yeah, it was tight, but it's good to do that extra lap. I led a lap, which is good. And uh, it just makes means I might be able to push a bit further. You never know when cautions are going to fly. And 
one car coming in behind me, but I'll scoot out in front of him. Just try not to speed right up 78 miles an hour. All right, coming across. They're going to pass me right there. There goes the leaders. We're just keeping an eye on that miles per hour. Don't want to speed. There we go. Back onto the track. One car coming up. Ugh. Dog's in there. Scoots by, but we'll get onto the track. So, so starts. Stint number three. And this should take us over halfway. There's one car. Oh, Jan Bikas. Making it interesting there. i got to put the rear bar down a little bit. Forgot about that. Come on, Jan. Right on the inside. I'm understeering so much. Cold tires. Full fuel. So don't want to oversteer and crash. So Jan's going to come back on the outside. He's on light fuel, so you can even see a lapped car is a lot quicker. Sketchy stuff. Here comes Willie T as well behind. Oh, it's so awkward when you're on a different fuel strategy from everybody else. So I'm 10 seconds off, so I didn't really gain anything through the cycle. It's kind of exactly where I was. Yeah, about one second, but it's not, <laughs> not as much as I was hoping for. But Alistair Jr. still leads, and Michael's right there, so they are neck and neck with each other, which is good. It's always bad when somebody's way out front. We've got a bunch of cars pitting now, all the lap traffic and stuff. But nice and clear coming into turn one. All right, this is the long part of the race. Now that we're through the first couple of stints. It's almost going to be... How many miles did I do before we restarted? Am I going to do a 600 today? I don't think I went 100 miles. It was close, though. I almost went a full stint. 125 laps to go. Yeah, I think it was like 28 laps or something like that in the first stint. If you're just joining now, started the race, had something weird. I used my keyboard, which I've also used a hundred other times during this so far, and for some reason, just everything minimized. And uh, because it was in that first stint and going by the rules that were put in place before we started this whole season, I did restart the race, but super weird. I'll have to figure out why that happened. But no keyboard for the rest of this. We're just going to use <laughs> the button box and things that I've got set up. So one car is exiting the pits there. So we're in into the third stint now. We're 25 laps away from halfway in the race. So we've got a couple cars slowing each other down here. Is that Beekus again and Scott Brayton? Get past both of them. I think Brayton was coming out of the pits there, so it was very slow. And we've got Alistair Jr. and Michael Andretti keeping each other company in front of me. And they seem to be my main challenge today. I've luckily been able to pull away from Emmo and John Andretti. I made some pit stop changes in the first stop to add just a little bit more rear wing and get the car to uh, be a little less sketchy. I was having a tough time to, through turns three and four in the first stint. But luckily, the car feels a lot better since then and feel a little bit more capable in pushing it as we'll scoot around Willie T there coming out of the pits. Yeah, now, now it's about getting to the end. Uh, turning down boost would, would really just be an option if we're trying to save fuel, but although we're four or five laps to the good currently on strategy, we really need a couple more yellow flags, I think, to have it make sense to really try to save and skip a pit stop. So we'll see. There's plenty of time for more yellow flags and for weird stuff to happen. That means we get off strategy, but... For the time being, we're still going to run it flat out because otherwise I'm going to lose a lap. Ooh. Really tight there. Just avoiding the cars coming out of the pits. I appreciate folks for tuning in today and sitting through some of the weird stuff up front. It's been a good race thus far, though, now that we've gotten going. And, uh... 
hopefully can get through this long middle part and stay on the lead lap and see see where things sort out. The wide open is much more fun, but fuel saving can be interesting too, and it's when it makes sense. Looks like Michael's fallen off Unser a little bit. And if I can't win today, definitely want Unser Jr. to win over Michael. Would prefer Michael to have a DNF. But Michael Andretti leads our championship so far by almost 20 points at this point, just after the first two rounds. So we really need really need to finish in front of him today, but if he wins, that would be even worse. So coming through turns three and four, we got cars everywhere. A lot of lap traffic now. I think I see Mario up there. And 20 laps to go. So Ari Leyendijk and everybody up here now. So Mario's going to look down the low side of like Roberto Guerrero. I'll get both of them there. Slide on by the other Newman Haas car. You can tell it's Mario. He's got a red roll hoop on the car in this in this set. Dean Hall here, get him through the short shoot. A little bit tight coming into turn four, but able to get away with it. See if I can slipstream with Ari to get past. Scott Goodyear, Ari's going to pinch me right down to the inside. That's so sketchy. Kind of bail out of it there. Just can't really huck the car in. You never know what's going to happen. As Goodyear is quite wide there. I've got Mario then thinking about lunging. All right, there we go. Hopefully can get Ari a little bit easier this time. Won't be three wide at least. So get up the inside here, come down into turn one. Backs out of it, thankfully. It's the real winner of the race. Not gonna do it today, I don't think. It's quite slow. On our initial initial start, he was very fast. Yeah, AJ Foyt's in the race. He's he was in the top ten last we saw. I'll try to get a look through the standings at some point here soon, just to see uh, where everybody's at for all of you. Yes, yeah, scroll on back. Foyt's in eighth right now, two laps down. Bettenhausen's in the pits. Here's all our cars that are out, so only 26 cars left in the race right now. Danny Sullivan, Fabi, Graf, Ro Boisel, Ray Hall is out as well. It's a big crash from Teo Fabi spinning and crashing through turn four. Just have to imagine there was a bunch of debris on the track and uh, collected a whole bunch of cars here in the early running. Be a lot of angry driver interviews in the pits. So we're trying to get over halfway into this with with this stint. Um, we'll certainly be able to do that. And then some. We need to figure out what my fuel number is so that as we get towards the end of the race, we might be able to short fill on one of the final stops and uh, really try to maximize everything we can out of the pits. Slip underneath Alancer there. Held me up for just a second. I think here is AJ. Battling with Rick Mears. Oh, as they all get squeezed up coming out of turn four, I'll sneak down the inside. Jump back up in front, so we'll head down the front stretch. Foyt hanging out there, though. Whoa, understeering so much there. Foyt sticks it up the outside, coming to turn two. <laughs> the guy's got a little bit of battle in him still. That would be the battle you want to see. Boyt versus Mears. It was 91 they started side by side in the 500, right? So not unplausible in our running. 
falling off a bit from the two liters though i just don't think i've got i could try to chance something and take some wing out of it or i, I certainly don't feel like i can take wing out of it the car I'm just kind of holding on as it is through the turns might be a bit of a deficiency in the setup it could just be the conditions just aren't aren't right for the car today seven for fuel yeah it's just over a gallon per lap yeah the car certainly feels a lot better now it's just not I'm still having a lift in every corner and I might be doing it just out of security to make sure the car is going to set up right, but... Otherwise, I mean, it, it doesn't feel super different from how I think it needs to feel, so it's just not quite there to keep up with Unser and Andretti right now. You don't know what's going to happen, though. <laughs> I, I do hope Andretti luck does its thing, but we'll have to see. Right out to the wall there. i got to avoid stuff like that. I could just easily kind of fall asleep here and, and take myself out of the race, which would be terrible. That is the last thing I need to do. All right, half tank of fuel. I'd be happier with P3 if Michael Andretti wasn't in front of me. Because he is so far cranked out to a pretty big lead, and it's going to quickly become an impossible task to catch him through the rest of the season if he's this consistent. But this would be his third top two in a row if he finishes up here today. The luck's got to end at some point, right? I mean, it'll also be my third top five, which is a, a very good statistic. But it's uh, just not going to be quite enough when you're as good as he's doing right now. Ward jumps low there on Bettenhausen. Now, water temp is good. 203 is good. I think as long as you're under 230, you're pretty good, I believe. 220, maybe? It would start flashing at me if it was too high. Seeing a flicker go across the top of the screen, it's scaring me. I don't know what that's from. Just trying to crank out these laps right now. Holding on to that lead lap, but I'm going to need a caution to save me quite soon. Got Eddie Cheever in front here as we're coming up on him. I haven't touched the bars in forever. I maybe should crank it up one scotch through the first couple of corners. Oh, Cheever's quick in a straight line, though. Yeah, John's going to get lapped here in a second. Yeah, that one light on the dashboard's used for everything. Fuel, overheating, revving. <laughs> I surprisingly have not heard that one juiced in the past. 
much better through turns one and two there with the bar a little stiffer. Still not daring enough to do that through three and four. Bit too narrow on the entry there that time though. Yeah, I certainly could use a yellow, Tony. I mean, it's, um... Oh, it's just catch the Menards car there at the wrong time. Uh, another yellow, especially, like, in a few laps here, if I'm going to get lapped, would be a very good thing. Right now, it would be a really tricky call to pit. I think you'd have to, but then we'd have to start saving fuel to not have to do an extra pit stop. So that, could, that would make things quite interesting. I think if a yellow came out right now, I would follow what the leaders do and pit or not pit based on them. Alright, 105 laps. Yeah, I mean, if a yellow came out right now, I would definitely pit and uh, I could definitely save five laps through the rest of the race. Catching up to Dobson here, or no, it's Guerrero. If you missed Long Beach last time, Guerrero nearly took me out of the whole race. While being lapped, decided to go for a massive lunge pass, and uh, I feel like was never going to make the corner, and just took me out with him, and somehow my car did not die. I, I think I blew two tires and lost the wings and everything, but the crew was able to fix it, and I, I was able to go on and get a fifth place finish, which, with all of that happening, was... Remarkable. So hopefully a cleaner afternoon today after some weird shenanigans off the start. So we're getting towards the end of this third stint, which will bring us over the halfway mark. And it's all downhill from there, right? brings a whole other aspect to this with the full damage. I mean, I, I was kind of scared to do it originally because I've had a lot of trouble with it, you know, playing this for years and years. It's just so many random things that can, can get you out of the race that are almost un out of your control. It's not even about driving well. It's also just everything else that can happen, but definitely adds a lot of uh, interesting scenarios to it and, and hopefully makes it a little more entertaining to watch as well knowing that at any second the whole race could be over the thing I'm most frightened about I'll be honest are the random failures just at any point our car could quit and it could be nothing to do with how I'm driving you can of course make the car fail a bit easier by over revving it or being punishing to the car overall but you could just be on your way and it's time for Time for the turbo to fail. It seems like the common one I get. So we'll have to see. Scoot underneath Jan Bikas and get the other Menards car here, I think. Yep. That's Jim Crawford. So 22 seconds off. Michael's pulled back in on Allen Sir Jr. in front. They're under a second away from each other. The spectators are loving it. And then a distant third is Ryan Axelson, last year's winner. But I'm ready to take advantage of anything that does happen in front of me. So we'll come down the front stretch behind Scott Goodyear. I'm going to have to wait for it this time. But we're just at halfway through the Indy 500. 250 down, 250 to go. And we're very good on fuel right now. If everything went like normal, we'd have to be pitting right on this lap. Yeah, John Andretti just went down a lap. Emmo's getting close to it as well, so... 
If it continues like this and there's no more yellow flags, it might just be those two on the lead lap towards the end. Plenty of ways to go yet. Halfway done. T here in front. Got a really bad turn in for turn two there, but I'll get him. Six and a half gallons. So we should have about another five laps before we pit. We'll see. Hopefully I can go longer than these two. I only went one lap longer than Michael last time. I think I went two laps longer than Alan or Jr. But, I mean, I'm not going to lead the most laps today, but at least I led a lap at some point. Well, there are random failures on <laughs> Deathmeister, unfortunately. It's what folks voted for. They're, I'll say, knock on wood, they're pretty rare. But if we go the full season and do not get one, I will be shocked. So, prepare at any point that the car is just going to stop on me. And folks wanted it, so... I just have to hope Sunoco Papyrus team screwed everything in tight today. Getting towards the end of the end of the run here. Fuel lights on. It's a bit light now and dodgy. Getting a lot more comfortable with the car though. I'm, I'm so happy that the wing change got rid of that terrible oversteer feeling because that was scaring me through the first stint. Oh, did Fittipaldi pit? Okay, so John got around him. Should do, I think, a couple more laps. We're just going to do full fuel and go. Four, four tires, full fuel. I'd love to do 70s, 60s, 70s IndyCar. I would have loved to do that in the Richie Axelson 66 season, but there's really just no way to do it. I thought about using that, uh, the game I played, the Xbox game I played once, but it just doesn't really do it justice in a simulation type way. It's fun. That's a fun game. Indy 500 Legends, right? But it doesn't quite fit with what I'm doing here. There's just not a way to really do Indy 500s from the 60s and 70s consistently in a sim. I'm going to come around. I'm going to go one more lap. This is sketchy, but I, th I should have just enough fuel to do it. I really want to make sure I'm maximizing this. I I'm going to run out as I come into the pits, but it'll be okay as long as I don't overshoot. Uh, this is a bit of a risk. we got to take risks sometimes. I'm going to turn it down. Maybe just a couple scotches on the old boost knob there. Underneath Poncho here. Oh, he dives in. I'm not going to lead a lap, though. Michael is able to stay in front. There is some mods out there for, like, R-Factor and stuff, but you can't... It's not quite like this, right? Where you're able to simulate a full race with good AI and all that. All right, come around to pit. Car's going to run right to the ragged edge of fuel here. Just can't overshoot. I'm, I'm good on fuel. Oh, I'm very slow. Come on. Very slow on fuel there. Or coming into the pits. You do indeed only live once, but that just got me that one extra lap, just in case you never know if we're gonna need to massively save fuel based on yellow flags or something, and that one extra lap could be it. And you would be like, why didn't I do that earlier? But Michael did the same thing, so kind of on the same strategy as the leaders right now. All right, we'll just come out of the pits, not speed here. So, 93 laps to go. We've got two more pit stops. If everything goes normally. 
let Jan Bika slide in front, or that's Alan, sir. One car coming up behind me, but should stay in front of him. Well, I did not change my bars. Get down one, one click. This lap traffic's now going to be a bit quicker just because of the fuel difference. Always making it interesting. Nice and smooth. All right, 92. Just got what Jeff Wood hanging out right in my rear view mirror. It's keeping me anxious. It's a very slow car, but he's quick just because he's got no fuel in the car. I assume he's going to pit in the next couple laps. We'll get Alan, sir, on the back stretch nice and easily. All right, it is now just the top three on the lead lap, and I'm I'm getting dangerously close to going a lap down here. Could really use a yellow flag. I'm falling more and more behind. Unfortunately, I don't have a teammate to spin. Oh, the car got a little, little odd right there. Yeah, my goal now is to not get lapped. I, re I need to stay in the lead lap and hope for a yellow flag to keep me in it. 26, gained a little bit that lap. Just maybe hope that traffic works out a certain way or something. Buddy Lazier in front, get around him, up the inside of the Hemelgarn car. Hold in. Six tenths. I'm not going to get excited until it starts getting really close, but I've gained on the last couple of laps on the leaders. Oh, really, really understeery there. The three bars on the display right above the fuel are my front and rear anti-roll bars. So I'm playing with those as we go through the fuel to try to make the car steer and not understeer and not oversteer and all that so you can adjust those. And then the bottom one is your braking bias, but for this track, we do not use the brakes except going to the pits. So that one stays pretty much where it is. Ah, I lost the time. So we're going to lose a little bit more here because Dobson in front parks it through turn number one. I know, when will his engine blow? <laughs> I'm waiting for it just as much as you all are. But there's nothing coded in this game that will make that happen. If it does, it's purely happenstance. But that's what makes it exciting. Both gaining just a little bit on Unser Jr. for whatever reason. Is here. I lost two tenths and that wasn't a bad lap. It was pretty average. Ah, 
I was trying to stay in it. Lost a lot of time. It would have been better to lift off a little earlier, but I was hoping I was going to be able to carry the speed. All right, I got to add some rear bar in the first corners. Oh, I scrubbed the wall there. That's not good. Hopefully, I didn't break anything. I can easily break the front wing. All right, go up one, one click on the rear bar. Axelson's really pushing it now, trying to have something to say about this. Yeah, just a slight breath of throttle through both of those. Oh no! I thought twice about that. And I thought I was going to be able to scoot around Willie T, and he flinched trying to get around Randy Lewis, I think, coming out of the pits, and I just got collected in that. Ugh. It's not really my fault, and it's also kind of my fault at the same time. Uh, there goes Alan Sir Jr. on by. Yeah, it's a DNF, that one for sure. Uh, I knew, so if you've been noticing, I've been trying to pass, you know, keep it on the low side most of the time for the passes, because that can happen to you. And uh, that's exactly what happened there. Gosh, was that Guerrero again? I mean, there, I just shouldn't have, like, shame on me for passing on the high side. But also, what can you do? What can you do? Yeah, here I come. I should have just waited and lost the time, but I was really starting to try to push a bit, and, uh, yeah. I mean, those things happen in real life, too. Yeah, sometimes they do that. I don't know. Ah, uh, that's so unfortunate. Watch it from every angle. Coming down into turn three, and Willie, Willie T, just, he didn't even really have to do that, either. Yeah, it's not my fault, but also, like, why am I taking risks with almost half the race to go? Yeah, I mean, there was no avoiding it. Once I committed to that high line, I was going there. Uh, that's so unfortunate, because this was... I needed this points today. This is really going to hurt the championship. Here, coming down the back stretch. I see Guerrero move low, and I probably should have done the same, and I figured I would squeak by on the high side. Uh, well, we're going to watch the... We'll, we'll go through the end of the race, so stick around if you want to see who ends up winning this thing, because we're still going to keep track of who wins, and we, we're going to collectively hope that... Uh, man. We're going to collectively hope that Michael Andretti doesn't win. So please start channeling some energy that Michael Andretti gets in a crash or has a mechanical failure and does not win this race and that he DNFs, ideally. Here we go, coming. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do <laughs> in that. But I shouldn't have gone to the outside. It's, I mean, maybe with five laps to go or something and chasing for the win, I'm 25 seconds off the lead, and that's, I just shouldn't have done that. I know better. That is, you know, as much as the AI did something so stupid there, I, uh, I have to take fault for trying to push a move when, uh, when I really didn't need to. I maybe could have still gotten by had I been really against the wall but I just nailed him and eh, maybe not the wall's quite close there but yeah so then slide into the into the wall it took both Willie and Guerrero with me Guerrero is going to continue on oh he almost gets clipped there by Alan or senior but Willie's out as well so it's going to be a DNF for myself in this one. But we will watch the uh, the rest of the race here. Let me just put this back on. Mm. 
Need a substitute host for some racing stewards. All right. So we'll accelerate time. So it'll be kind of a faster end of the race. But Ryan Axelson, DNFs. John Andretti somehow was involved. Hold on. Did John Andretti crash into us? So as stuff happens, we can pause and take a look at it on the track and everything. What happened? Yeah, it was a really late move. That stuff happens, though. And I mean, like I said, I really should know better. Wow, we had a huge pileup again. Man, a lot of pileups today. So John maybe hit... Did he hit Alancer Jr.? I think John Andretti hit Alancer Jr. What am I doing? So, John Andretti's coming up to the accident site a little bit too fast. And, uh, yeah, hits... Almost hits... Emerson there and does hit the back of Alancer Jr. Luckily, luckily Mears gets through all right. Wow. Everybody was all weird till I got out of the way. So it'll be interesting to see if that ends up affecting uh, ends up affecting the results at all. But John Andretti then is going to DNF out of it. I did forget my finish rules. You're right, Cyber Future. You've been around a little while. I broke my own rules. Yeah, I mean, it's it, exactly, Pavel. As frustrating as it is, it's it's neat when there's unpredictability. Because it creates... I mean, stuff like that could have easily happened in real life. It seems ridiculous, but how many times has a slower car messed up and uh, and taking a leader out of a race. It happens all the time. Or a leader, J.R. Hildebrand, comes around on the final lap of the race and the AI or the <laughs> lapped car is kind of in the way. And then you throw the whole thing away. So that's how it is. Oh, thank you, Punch Punch a Waterfall. Thank you for, for becoming a member. Appreciate that. We're back under green, though. So it's 124 laps done, 125 done out of 200. And it is faster than real time. So this will kind of speed through, but not too fast. We can keep a track of what's going on. Alancer Jr. leads the way over Michael Andretti. Jeff Wood jumps in the pits and gets... Oh, he's out with a half shaft problem. So Jeff Wood crashes out. With a half shaft issue. So yeah, we have a lot of folks out of the race. It's almost a third of the field. One third of the field is out of the race. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, so getting into the last couple of stints, they should all be pitting pretty soon. And it seems like even though Alancer Jr. got tapped from behind, he's fine. He is fine. Still out front there. I if Michael doesn't DNF, Alan or Jr. better win this. Or else the championship's going to be in a not good spot. But he's fallen back a little bit. Pulled it back in that lap. So a bit of a swap going on between Cheever and Rick Mears. Eddie Cheever beating Rick Mears up there in fourth. Yeah, Dobson's up in the top ten. AJ Foyt's having a great run. You love to see it. Up in seventh. I don't think AJ is going to uh, win today, but a few laps off. All right, Alcer Jr. pit. Andretti's stretching it out with the fuel, but he should have to pit. There he is. Michael Andretti in the pits comes out. Wait, he got in the lead. How did he get in the lead? Oh, okay. Alcer Jr. is with him, but Michael got, got into the lead through the pit stops. They should have one more stop. Eddie Cheever's pitting. Drops him down the order. We're coming up to... Okay, everybody else is pitting, so... Alancer Jr. is right behind Michael Andretti. He's going to try to go for it. Mario pits. Everybody's pitting. Coming into the final quarter of the race. Dean Hall's in 11th somehow. Dominic pitting from 9th. Alancer Jr. 1.4 seconds behind. If you remember last season, final race of the year, I had a mechanical failure. Oh, Alancer Jr.'s right on him. Come on, Al. Come on, little Al. Get around him. We need you.
Now the thing is you can't watch it and we'll watch the end of the race uh, or if there's like a pass or something, we'll, we'll jump out and watch, but you can't watch it and progress the time at the same time. So um, it gets kind of awkward to do in that way. The Alistair Jr. is right there. I mean, they're, they're with each other. I would love it if, <laughs> if they had a little bit of a coming together. Oh, he's with them side by side. So coming to 40 laps to go. They're both going to have to pit here soon. One point two seconds back. I'm just watching that gap update lap after lap. Yeah, the rest of the field is quite slow. I mean, we had a lot of the quick cars crash out. Remember, in a couple of the incidents, Tony Bettenhausen Jr. pitting down the order. My pleasure, life racing engines. He's falling off just a little bit. We got thirty three laps to go. They're within the last pit window, so it's it might come up to this final pit stop here. And if Alistair Jr. can can somehow make up the gap. But last time through, he was a little bit slower. Two point eight seconds back. Oh, he's falling off a little bit now. This isn't good getting into the final stages here, but the pit stop is still to come. And we'll have to see who blinks first. So come into the final 25 laps. They're both hoping for a yellow flag or something. That'll uh, allow them to, to get that pit stop. Four seconds off. This isn't looking good. Oh, he's pulled it back in a bit. All right, Emerson pits from third. He's doing his final pit stop. Alistair Jr. is right there. Under a second behind. 1.1 now. Come on. He's going to have to pit. When are they going to pit? There he goes. Alistair Jr. in the pits. Final pit stop for him. Comes out. And we'll just wait for Michael gets in the pits. Come on, little Al. No, I think Michael's got him. We'll see next time by what the gap is. 2.2. All right, it's going to come down to this final final run to the finish. 19, 18 laps to go. Emerson's just one lap off. Cheever pits. Drops down the order. A lot of cars are going to have to pit here in the late running. But Alistair Jr., come on, get up there. You got 15 laps to do it. You can win a few years early. Mario pits from fourth back into fifth. Mario's done quite well for the slow, slowness of his car, but a lot of a lot of the drivers you see were missing a lot of those that would have been in the top five. Just, just some of those accidents. Danny Sullivan, Bobby Ray Hall. We had some crashes early on. Uh, under 10 laps to go, and Andretti is in the lead, and he is going to sneak away with this, isn't he? It's really going to put a one of the first nails into the coffin on this championship. He's cranked up the wick. The AI do go faster at various points during the race, and, and Michael Andretti is stretching his legs here in the final final few laps of the race. Four laps to go. We'll jump out and watch the final lap or two, especially if something interesting happens. But here it comes, 198. Uh, now would be the amazing time to see the failure. 205 there with one lap to go, coming up to take the white flag. White flag, 3.5 second gap, but Michael Andretti's going to come around and win it. Oh my god. That was a rough one today. Michael Andretti wins it. We'll watch his final lap. There's my sad towed away car. We'll uh, we'll rewind a bit and watch the final lap or so. We got, I think, Michael Andretti right behind him. There he is. He's going to come here and take the white flag. Ah, so not only did I have a rough day. But Michael Andretti also gets the win. Streaming past. <laughs> yeah, it hurts me. It hurts me. He's able to pass on the outside of the left cars. Yeah, it looks like little Al's just had a tough time through traffic. And uh, here he comes. Michael Andretti. Coming through the final corner. Speed cam. To win... The Indy 500. 
We'll look back. Boyd's coming across. Here comes Little Al in second. It's got Goodyear. What was it Emerson Fittipaldi? Here's Rick Mears coming through. Emo's going to come away third. I think Emo might have passed the finish line and, and went one extra lap down there right at the end. But yeah, Michael Andretti wins the Indy 500 and it's going to extend his points lead, which very much hurts me. Uh, so from hero to zero, winning last year's Indy 500 and now crashing out of it this year. It's not been a good couple of streams for me the last couple days. But we'll look here. 24th finish. 24th place finish. DNF. Ahead of a whole bunch of accidents. John Andretti involved in mine. Willie T. Ribs as well. I'm not gonna blame Willie outright for it, but it was uh it was a bit of a bit of a wild move there from Willie. So Hiro Matsushita comes comes away the last finisher with an engine failure. 25 laps into the race from Randy Lewis. And Bobby Ray Hall. We've got Raul Boizel, Mike Groff. Finishes in 29th. Teo Fabi, Danny Sullivan, Willie T. Ribs, and John Andretti. Those are all your accident DNFs. Ryan Axelson, myself, 24th with the with an accident as well. I don't know why it classifies me as a DNF. It's like I quit. <laughs> but it was an accident. Wood finishes half shaft failure in 23rd. And then 22 runners. So, honestly, DNF rate was pretty accurate, actually. But Gary Bettenhausen finishes... Only 184 laps, so 16 laps down. But 22nd from Poncho Carter. Al Unser with a top 20. Not too bad. Scott Brayton with 19th. Kevin Kogan. Buddy Lazier. 187 laps complete. Jim Crawford in the other Menards car up in the 16th. And then to the top 15. Didier Thays. Uh, Tony Bettenhausen in 14th. Roberto Guerrero. Kind of involved in that crash. Second second race running, I've been collected with something involving Guerrero. But he wasn't really to blame this time out. Finishes in 13th, 188 laps complete. Dean Hall up to 12th for Dale Coyne. Scott Goodyear finishes 11th. And then to the top 10, Jan Bikas with the top 10. 192 laps complete, so eight laps down, but... Finishes top 10. Dominic Dobson up in 9th. AJ Foyt, 6 laps down, finishes in 8th position. Mario Andretti, 5 laps back in 7th. Ari Leyendijk in 6th. Eddie Cheever, we had a good fight here between these three with, with 5 laps down. Eddie Cheever, Rick Mears as well up there in 4th. So Rick, uh, Eddie Cheever in his, in his rookie race. But Rick Mears back there in 4th. And then we get to the top 3. Emerson Fittipaldi finishes 2 laps back. Two laps back in third place. And then the final two, of course, we saw it all. Alistair Jr. leads the most laps today, but does not get the win. Must hurt. Alistair Jr. finishes second to Michael Andretti. Gets the win in our 1990 Indy 500. So we'll save the standings there and exit out. So I just pick up, I do pick up a point I got one point for leading a lap. That was why that was important. Or no, for the pole. Sorry, it's not leading laps. That's NASCAR. I got a point for the pole. If you remember back, I did something good today. I got a pole. So I got one point for that. So it's not, not all lost. But we'll take a look here at the points as they run. I'm still in fourth. I'm tied with Danny Sullivan now, though. But it's Michael Andretti leading the way. He's almost double. He is almost double up. 59 points. Two wins on the season, three top two finishes. It's He's got to have some bad luck here shortly, or this is going to be a pretty short run to the championship. But then Bobby Ray Hall back there in third. Ryan Axelson in fourth. So no wins yet, two top fives. That DNF's going to hurt, though. I have to hope Michael has some DNFs. Yeah, I mean, Danny today had the DNF as well, so that... That's why I'm I'm able to, to hold it up with him. But Bobby Ray Hall is definitely within reach. So, I mean, easily, you know, we got a good fight going for the top four here. Top three. But Emma is, is doing quite well finishing third today. And then Michael Andretti, so it's almost 60 points. It's going to make him very hard to catch. 
But I think that's it. Oh, that did not go how I wanted it to today. Between the weird start on the first first run and then I, I could have probably have done this race a hundred times and that could have happened every time there. Uh, but we will be headed to Milwaukee next for, for the race there. That one went pretty well last year. I think I won there as well, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to look back on it. But I feel like I'm always kind of quick at Milwaukee. And so hope I can channel some of that. I really need to get going on this championship and uh, have a good race. But as ever there, lap traffic and all that will be will be the thing. But hope it was fun either way. Um, I know I know I had a good good amount of fun doing this. Doesn't always go. This is what happens in a realistic uh, damage and realistic failures season is there's going to be some DNFs. And I really hope it was not going to be Indianapolis, but... That's how it goes. This way you know for real it is uh, when it when it goes well, that's why it's so exciting. But I think that's it for this one. I think IndyCar qualifying is just about to start from uh, Texas Motor Speedway. So go check that out. Hopefully it's a good race in Texas this weekend. And uh, I'll prob probably leave this stream up for a little bit while so that uh, I don't spoil the results for folks tuning in later. But I thank you all for watching. And I guess we'll listen to Paul Page just one more time to... Make me feel good about everything, but have a great weekend. I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps.